um, is, this is going to be very specific to um, activities that we recommend you do with peer leaders. But um, I know there's some schools that maybe don't have peer leaders, um, or you have peer leaders, but you maybe don't want those peer leaders. <laughs> um, so you can always have what we call honorary peer leaders, uh, but these are just things. And there's, it's not. This is not to be confused with student engagement. Um, it is very specific to peer leader engagement, and these are the top ten things that um, I would like to recommend to you. And also, I'll preface it with: so for a lot of your students, um, when they go to the workshop, they um, they're dealing with what's called a RAP director, and the RAP director um, works with them around peer leadership, um, around um, the the. Uh, Rap sessions uh, in which we talk about like what are their obstacles, what is an obstacle you have overcome, and how did you overcome it? It's a very specific question. Um, and the rap director sort of goes through that process with them. And so most, and I'm a rap director during the summer for probably two, uh, last summer it was just one. So some of your kids I know for a fact they know about these things, um, so they cannot give you pushback. I would say I'm like 60% sure for the rest of the schools it happened at those workshops as well. Um, so if you ever need someone come in, to, uh, someone to come in and just sort of remind them, um, sort of with a heavy hand, the rap director, I'm fine with doing that. Just let Daniel or Leora know. Um, so the number one thing that I suggest is if you want a strong peer leader engagement program at your school or peer leader activity, they really need strong adult allies. So while we um, we will discuss what peer leadership looks like at workshops, the student that you send us is the student we send back to you. So some of them make a little bit of a transition where they're like, oh yeah, I didn't really think I could go to college, but now I can go. There's not, for some students, there's like maybe a 2%, there's this miraculous change in them. And they come back after a very short four days ready to do these amazing things. Most of your kids, the kid you send us is the kid you're gonna get back, and they still need some support. They still need a little bit of a push to actually be a peer leader. So at the schools, there's a couple of schools here now, you guys have really strong peer leader programs. And the reason is, is because there's a, quite a few of you who are uh, super engaged with them and have the time and the capacity to um, really push them and, and, and coach them toward that. Um, so, yeah. Number two, meeting etiquette and process coaching. So, like most of us, if we're, you know, I did not know how to run a meeting until somebody taught me. So take a 17-year-old um, from our communities they need help, like they need help on, you know, what does it mean to show up early? It doesn't mean you show up at four for four o'clock meeting, it means you show up at 10 to four, right? You're ready, you're sitting down. They need to hear these things. They need to know about, um, you know, someone needs to create an agenda, someone needs to run the agenda, someone needs to take notes, you know, who's doing the follow-up, what are next steps? Like all the stuff that we do when we try to have really effective meetings, that process needs to be shared with um, students. And sometimes, you know, there's, what I've noticed is that within most of our peer leader cohorts at each school, there's at least one or two, um, not every situation, um, but usually there's at least one or two students that you can kind of depend on. And you can give them that, you can give them that responsibility if, again, you go back to number one where they got that strong adult ally on campus that can kind of walk them through it. Um, but this is something that sometimes gets lost. Like I know that a lot, a lot of our schools, they're like, well, you gave me a list of peer leader names and I told them here's a room, meet. And then we're surprised that they didn't show up and meet. Um, because they're still 17 and some of us don't even show up on the meetings we're supposed to show up. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, number three, so activity specific is Tower of Power. Tower of Power is a, um, let me see Jude Jordan's Tower of Power actually from this year. Um, thank you, Leora, put that up there. Tower of Power is a financial, um, awareness event in which uh, it's a it's a it's an activity that your peer leaders go through at the workshop. So they're actually put through that workshop through other peer leaders who are now in college. They're what we call alumni leaders. So the alumni leaders actually teach the peer leaders about the five different pieces that general pieces that make up a financially packaged loans, grants, scholarships. Um, and it's this process of students actually building a tower. The tower signifies their financially package and we teach it's it, incorporate self-advocacy, like how do you get the different pieces of financial aid, and, and as a group they create this financial aid package, and it gets tested, and, and in the debrief, if it's done correctly in the debrief, you actually talk about, did how was your tower? Did it stay standing? Did it tip over? How tall was it? And it's supposed to you know, signify 
the work that it takes to actually create a strong financial aid package. Um, and it can be pretty powerful as long as, which I tell my team this all the time, it has to be debriefed. So what I suggest is so if you want a strong, strong Tower of Power event, you have to prep your students. There, there needs to be some sort of process where you um, are walking them through the pro walking them through the activity. Because um, it can, it's pretty rowdy. It can get out of control quickly. <laughs> Lisa? <laughs> It was crazy. It was crazy. And what the cool thing is, is when you do it with parents, like there's some schools that actually have parents come in and do it with parents. It's a really good activity to do with parents, but um, that was the first time at Lionel Wilson. Like I saw it's dads just went crazy. I know. I've never seen them so engaged in meetings. It was really cool and insane. Where's that all strong? At the same time. Um, and then another tip: if you have a, if you have a, if you have a large population that speaks another language, highly recommend that you split the group for parts of it to have like an English. Spanish or um, Cantonese and English, Spanish, whatever. Um, but again, this is one of those activities where if you've had it at your school, you know that we'll support you as much as we can. We'll come in, we will work with the creators because it's that is really time intensive, labor intensive. Um, I, I've, we're doing it at Open School for the Arts, and I've met with them like four times now. And, um, it better be good. Just, <laughs> it's got to work. Um, fourth thing is um, something you do with your peer leaders. This is a little, this is way less time-intensive and labor-intensive is using them to public publicize and support school events. It does not need to be college summit um, generated. So for example, most, a lot of your schools or your campuses have cash for college. And I know that the East Bay Consortium is struggling with getting people out to have people there. And there's that thousand dollar scholarship. You need X number of students to actually show up for students to get that scholarship. Use your peer leaders to publicize it. Use them to make posters, to put posters around. Have them, task them to hand out those cash for college um, find, uh, flyers. flyers, thank you. Um, Elsely have them, you know, coach them a little bit to talk to their friends about coming. Coach them about how do you talk to your parents to get your parents to come. And then they can talk to <coughs> their friends and their friends' parents to get them to come. Um, and so it's a little bit of meeting time, and then after that you just kind of send your, your, your students out there. And it could also be like talking to, giving them 10 minutes at the beginning of an advisory class or the embedded class that the that, that College Summit is being taught in, put your peer leaders at the front of the class and have them talk about the event and, and publicize it and say why it's important to come. Um, because the, we need to be reminded, and we need to be reminded often, so students need to be reminded, those who are eligible, if you don't fill out the FAFSA, you will get no money. Zero, zilch. Um, and so uh, publicizing events like Cash for College or whatever else you're doing, there's a couple of schools that do the Cal Grant. You know, they use peer leaders, like you were saying, use your, your classroom, but they might use peer leaders to have them go around and get the forms. Um, again, that's less labor intensive for you, and it's just sending your peer leaders out. Uh, five, Wall of Honor. This is something that is um, specific to College Summit, but not doesn't have to be. Um, I, I want to give a shout out to Lana Wilson. Like, you guys have taken it to a whole other place. Um, <laughs> Like it's like, it's, yeah, it's just insane, but in a really good way. Uh, Wall of Honor is just that, it's a it's a, a space in which you celebrate your seniors, whatever their post-secondary plan is. It doesn't it doesn't have to be a four-year or two-year. If you've got students who are going into vocational programs, if you've got students going into the military, the thing is, a student needs to have a plan, right? We are, we're pushing college, but not college, as much as College Summit pushes college, college is not for every student. Um, the thing is, is a student needs to have a plan so that at the end of what I tell students, when you graduate, the last thing I want to hear is to get on my Facebook and see you smoking a joint, sitting on your mom's couch, and that's the extent of your life from there forward. Like, you need to have a plan. That's not a plan. That's just <laughs> something that happens. Um, and so this really helps them. Like, in, and I remember, I think I want to say two years ago when we went to Lana Wilson to, we went to Lana Wilson to, to um, we have um, impartial judges. Like, we don't. Leora, Damien, and I do not judge, because we didn't fight. Because if we did, but we we didn't fight. We don't win. Right. Lost. No. But um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, but I remember standing in front of the when we went to go see Lana Wilson's, and there was two young ladies. They probably they could have been freshmen or younger, because you guys have six through eighth grade, right? Six to twelve. Six to twelve. Um, and so one of the young ladies was looking at. I think it might have been. No, it was the year before this one. She was standing in front of the picture and she was like, one said, oh, look at my brother, that's my brother. I'm gonna be up there just like my brother. And then the other young lady was like, oh, look at him, he's cute. What school is he going to? I'm gonna go to that school. <laughs> it's that simple, you know, but it starts creating that idea of like, you know, 
I can do this, this is shared, this is part of my community, becomes a reality. And that's kind of when, when Flam, those of you who remember Patricia Martin used to work uh, in our region, we came up with this idea, we were like, how can we help sort of like support the schools in building that 